Hi, I'm Lawson and I'm here with Bo and we're at Button Willow Raceway to take a closer look at AM's new Vehicle Dynamics module. One of the great things about the Infinity ECU is it can log 100 channels at up to 1000 hertz a channel, but to take that engine data and combine it with your track data, you needed to output it to uh, AQ1 or third party data logger. That all ends with the new VDM. The VDM includes a three axis gyro, a three axis accelerometer and a five hertz GPS and GLONASS antenna that allows you to create track maps using GPS data and also get acceleration, yaw, pitch and roll and have all of that data combined in your Infinity ECU logs via DTM connection. Now we're going to talk about what the VDM actually measures and we're going to use this handy little model I've got here to show you. So the VDM comes with a three axis accelerometer which is going to tell you longitudinal acceleration which is like braking or acceleration forces. It's going to uh, show you cornering force which is your lateral acceleration in this direction and it's going to give you vertical acceleration which is up and down like this which would be like going over a bump or a hill. Also the VDM has a three axis gyrometer and that's going to give you your pitch or dive in this direction, body roll, or yaw, which is in this direction here. The VDM also has a 5 Hz GPS GLONASS system, which is going to give you very accurate uh, vehicle location on the track. It's going to give you GPS speed, which is going to be actual ground speed versus just what's on your speedometer, which may not be exactly accurate. GPS heading and altitude. All right, let's get this thing wired up and take it out on track and get some data. You made a toy back. <laughs> Jeez. So we've got the AEM VDM installed inside the car. Now we just need to uh, put this GPS module outside. We put it on top of the roof. That way it has a really nice view of satellites. You want to put it anywhere on, on top of the car is ideal. In our situation here, this roof happens to be steel and this uh, GPS antenna has a magnet inside. So all we need to do is just stick it on there and it's going to stay put. We've routed this wire here through the uh, rear window and inside the car to the center console. All right, now we're gonna do the last little bit to get this VDM ready for the track. We've actually got the VDM installed in the center console here. And on this particular car, this spot is actually a pretty ideal location. You can see it's flat to the ground, which is important. And it's also in the center of the car. So it's pretty much in the center of the wheelbase. You don't wanna have the VDM very far forward or very far towards the back or towards the left or the right. It's, it's ideal to have it right in the center um, of the car. This is right where we've got it. So you can see that the uh, status light here is blinking red, indicating that there's no GPS signal. So as soon as we plug in the GPS antenna into the VDM, we see it goes green there, and that's telling us there's a, there's a fix acquired, meaning that the VDM and the GPS antenna are picking up enough satellites. And then we should be good to go. So now we're gonna go out on track. We've got the VDM sending data to the Infinity over CAN, and the Infinity in this car is set up to log anytime the engine's running. So all we need to do is start up the engine and we're ready to go. Alright, now that we've come off track, we're going to go ahead and download the data. We've got our USB cable here from the Infinity. I'm going to go ahead and plug it into our laptop. Open up the Infinity Tuner software and then download the file. Now we're going to take a look at some data using our AEM data analysis software. We've already got the track map set up, but we'll show you how to do that in a separate video. One thing I'm seeing here in the data is going through this turn here. I'm just going to go ahead and highlight it for you, as you can see here in this track map. I'm noticing that the lateral acceleration is about 0.6 to 0.7 G. And looking at the rest of the data, it looks like the car is able to pull right around 1 G um, pretty consistently. So this tells me here that I'm not taking this turn as fast as I could. Let's take a look at this braking zone right here going into turn one. And now coming up to this braking zone, we're doing about 115 and we're braking down to about 50 miles an hour. So it's a, it's a pretty heavy braking zone. And if we take a look at the white uh, trace here, this is our longitudinal acceleration or our braking force. Now we see that we're braking in pretty much a straight line. If we look at this uh, red line here, it's pretty much at zero. There's uh, no steering angle. Steering angle is zero, which is our purple line here. So we're braking in a straight line. 
but I'm seeing that the longitudinal acceleration is not very constant. It comes down sort of slowly here and it has a peak and then it trails off a bit. So this tells me that I'm not braking to the, the car's full potential. And what we want to see is we want to see this white line come down a bit quicker and stay pretty flat and then come up a bit uh, more suddenly. And I think by braking a little bit harder, we can brake a little bit later and maybe carry a little bit more speed through that turn.